Good day, YouTubers. I left home this morning with the intention of going down to the Raby Bay ramp, launching, getting out to the South Passage Bar by First Light, and heading out to Fish Sea 29 Fathom Line. Well, it was all going to plan until I got down to the ramp. There was one fellow there that beat me to it. He was on the ramp. He'd just launched his boat and his car was still sitting there. He came up to have a yarn to me while I was prepping my boat. He asked me if I was heading outside and I said yes I was, going out through the centre channel to fish the 29 fathom line. And he asked if I'd mind if he followed me out. He said he was inexperienced at crossing bars, but it had been a year since he'd crossed the South Passage Bar and he'd just feel more comfortable if he could follow someone out who'd had more recent experience. So as soon as he was familiar with crossing bars, I said yes. If he'd been a novice and didn't really know what he was doing, I would have said no, because there's a lot more to crossing a bar than just knowing where the channel is. But since he was experienced, we did that. And then he started telling me about where he was going to be fished, what the bottom was like, what he caught there, and asked if I'd like to follow him out once we got through the bar, and he'd show me the spot. So I said, yeah, sure, if you don't mind showing me, I'm really happy to learn new spots. So that's what we did. And that's the background story on how I left home thinking I was going to fish the 29 fathom line and ended up at the 35s. So let's roll the video and see how that went. Really early start this morning, well and truly before first light. I hate to be out to the bar around first light, so I can cross it just at first light. I'll tell you what, there's been a mime going on on Facebook lately about the guy who makes his lunch and eats it two minutes after he gets to his fishing spot. Well, I made my lunch, or my wife did anyway, and I'm going to eat it two minutes from the ramp because I'm getting hungry. So I'll put the camera down and get into that. How Pacific is the Pacific today? What a day out here. Okay, got him this time. Wait on that other line, I think. Oh, still got him. Oh yeah, still got him. <laughs> Question is, are you big enough? Borderline, eh? <sighs> what are you doing? Oh, yeah, come on, don't do that to me. Ah, oh, yes, you're big enough, you're 38, that'll do. Oh, that's one. Uh, oh, it didn't get me. Didn't get me too very up. Screwdriver. My brain spike. Yeah. Yeah, after the drift been 
Oh yeah, time to pull in and go back. Reset everything. Oh, gotta put a line on the back of this one next time. It's a bit easier to pull in anyway. This is the bottom where this guy showed me to fish. As you can see, there's lots and lots of pinnacles down there. Some of them big, some of them small, but the whole area just seems to be covered in them. I'm not going to give you the GPS marks for this spot because it's not my spot to give. The fellow gave it to me, and it's up to him if he wants to make it public. No doubt many people will already know about it. I don't believe that there's any such thing as a secret fishing spot. All it means is you just haven't seen someone else fishing there yet. But as you can see, it looks a very promising ground. I'd expect to find snapper and pearlies down there at the very least. So I'll be going back to try it again and again, just to see how it pans out. However, all these spots that are found are found by people who just motor around. I'm going to motor around a little bit later in the video and just see what I can find. I do find a couple of things that are interesting enough to take some screenshots and put the GPS marks up for you. I don't know whether they'll actually produce, but they're interesting enough to come back and have a closer look at it some other time. excited now he's getting up towards the boat. Oh, oh not too bad. Oh yeah. He'll do. He's only just caught two. Huh, I expected you to put up more of a fight than that. Even the size of you. But never mind. That'll do. This one is here. 50, okay. You're good. Spike ya. Two down, couple of feeds there. Hey, time to time to move back on the drift, I think. Yeah, well and truly past where I want it to be. Something on this one too. Something had a bite on the way up, I'd say. Definitely got hit a couple of times there, just before we got to the top. Yes, we've got some fish here. Well, here as well. As 
see it. You lose sight of Morton Island over there. And you come up on the swell, and it's back again. And it has to be for oh, good 12 seconds, I guess, on that swell. You barely even notice it when it's 12 seconds swell. It could be a lot higher and you wouldn't notice it, but it is, gives you an idea just how high it is that we can disappear down into the swell. I did try to explain this out on the water, but there's a bit too much wind noise, so I'm going to re-record it now. What I was saying was that the swell I'd estimate to be around 1.2 metres, but because of the period getting up towards 12 seconds, it's unnoticeable really. It could be a couple of metres with a 12 second period and it wouldn't be uncomfortable. But that same swell with say a 4 second period, would be a lot more noticeable. All the waves and the white caps you see are being whipped up by the wind. The wind's blowing from the west, so the further out away from the coastline you get, the worse it gets. And that's causing the main part of the boat movement. If it was just the swell itself, it'd be a real calm day. And just for contrast, look back in the early part of the video where we just got across the bar and see how smooth it was, and have another look later on when we're coming back in towards the bar, again how smooth it is, because the wind hasn't had time to operate on the water and create those wind waves. This is a track that I followed. I departed Ravy Bay out through the Rouse Channel across the bar and followed the guys out to the 35 fathom mark they had. And then when I gave up fishing that, I worked my way back, checking some other areas that I thought might be worthwhile, back towards the west. And then I headed up to the 29 fathom line where I had done pretty good on the last few trips. Unfortunately, this wasn't one of them. I had some problems with the Minn Kota, where it wouldn't spot lock. It worked in all other respects, but for some reason the spot lock just wouldn't happen. I don't know what was going on there. I've got to look into that yet. Not being able to spot lock meant that I had to drift, and the direction of the shelf that I was trying to fish on was north-south. The drift was west to east, so I didn't get very long over the fishing zone, and it just wasn't really worthwhile. Didn't do any good at all, and headed back in. I did about three or four drifts on those pinnacles and I got the small snapper then another drift or two and I got the bigger one. That was it, they went off the bite. So I went around and had a bit of a search around to see if I could find some new ground. I got these screenshots from it and the GPS marks, I think there's four GPS marks there. Some of the screenshots are doubled up where I took a screenshot of the rain marine and one of the hummingbird, some of them aren't. There should be four distinct marks there. The last one is the best one. The others are just some rough ground. There wasn't much fish anywhere I went on the day on the sounder, but also, as you can see, I was having some electrical interference on the boat that day, and I couldn't tune out the garbage on the sounder, so that made it a little bit harder to see what was happening. And these spots may not be any good, but I'm going to come back to them and have another look another day when the sounder's behaving a bit better and just see what they look like then. If you're out there in the meantime, you can check them out yourselves. Yeah, I'm just going to try something, just for the heck of it. I don't know if it'll work, but it occurs to me that this might be alright for trolling for things other than Spanish mackerel. So I'm going to rig one up, stick it on the downrigger and see what happens. Let me see. Yeah, it went through there, if I recall correctly. Poke that through his eye socket. That's about right. There we go. That's got him. Alright, that much is ready, ready to go. Now, see if they're getting this. Okay, get that ball on. Let our troll out. I've done a video in the past showing using this Canon downrigger in bottom tracking mode and that is you set the distance off the bottom that you want to stay, lower the downrigger down, there's a transducer on the back of the boat that's attached to the downrigger and it maintains that distance off the bottom. That's probably one good way to use this but it has another mode of use and that is cycling in which case you set the upper and lower limits that you want the bait to troll at and it cycles between those limits with a delay that can be set. So if you set a 10 second delay, it'll go down to the bottom limit, wait 10 seconds and slowly come up to the top limit, wait 10 seconds down to the bottom and so on and so forth. 
The speed at which it cycles up and down is also individually settable. That's the mode I'm going to use now. I've never tried that before, but I think that would probably be a good mode to use for mid-column fish. I don't expect there's any fish exactly where I am now. I should have been further back up where I was trying to spot lock. But with the mincoder not working and the amount of time it's taken me to get all this ready, I've ended up drifting further down and it's time to head on home. So I'm just going to try this just to get the set up right, make sure I can use it the way I want to. I'll be ready for the next time I go out because I've been meaning to try this for a while now. There's a couple of spots inside the bay that I have in mind for it and I'll do a video on that when I do get around to it. And what happened next was precisely the reason that I wanted to have a dry run out here on the way home before I went to an area that I actually intended to fish with this. It didn't cycle. It took me a good 10 or 15 minutes to figure it out. I didn't read the manual, of course. It's got buttons, it's got menus, how hard can it be? I did eventually get it working, but in the 10 or 15 minutes I was well away from any hope of catching any fish with it. But at least now I know that I can get it working straight away when I take it fishing for real. Well, it's doing what it should do now. I don't know why it's so hard to get going. Obviously something I was not doing correctly on the menu. Got it working now. Not the best spot for doing this. Uh, I should be back up there where I was trying to fish. I don't get much in the way of fish there. I'll give you some practice anyway. I'll just run it for, I don't know, maybe half an hour. Just hit a couple of marks on the way back. See if it does any good. Well, that was it for trialling the cycling on the downrigger. By the time I got it working, I was that far away from any marks or structure that the only fish I would have caught was one that was lost. Nevertheless, it was a worthwhile exercise because now I know how to use the cycling on the downrigger. I do intend to use that on one of the reefs in the bay. I have a couple in mind where it might be worthwhile to do, plus a couple of other spots that aren't reefs. I think it'll be a worthwhile fishing tool, cycling a pilly or a gar up and down the water column. Can't see why it wouldn't work. Of course, every idea you get about fishing, you've got to try it out, and a lot of them just don't pan out. So we'll see in a future video how that goes. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed being out there. I think the most interesting thing about the trip this time was that the swell period was very long and although the swell was you know, around about the 1.2 to 1.5 metre mark, you barely noticed it because of the long period. I think this is the first video I've had a chance to demonstrate that for those of you that don't get offshore. What you did notice when you are out there was the westerly wind. The further out you got, the rougher the wind made the water and that was the wind whipping up the surface waves rather than the swell coming in from the ocean. Some days you're out there with a swell that's on a really short period and boy I can tell you you notice that. I remember one trip I was out there with three or four of the kids and I had to bait all their hooks and I mean they were old enough to bait their own, they were in their twenties. But they were all so seasick that they couldn't put their heads down to bait their hooks so I ended up sitting there baiting everyone's hook for them and barely got to fish. Anyway. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, you can go to my YouTube channel. Until next time, good fishing.